Hi everyone, this is Grace, and today I'll be walking you through how I made this Halloween set. Now, confession up front, I did make this set three years ago. I know, I know. But this is still hands down one of my favorite Halloween sets I've ever made. I would consider it a more classic Halloween set, which I think is why it resonates so well with so many people still. So let me start with one of my favorite cookies from this set, and this is the Skull Cutter big fan. Okay, this is a technique that I do on a couple of different cookies where I'm just painting. It looks like maybe this is a like a thin soft peak. You can use a flood consistency, you can use a piping consistency, it doesn't really matter. You'll have more texture in the in this layer of icing, the thicker icing that you use. Um, so I guess it's just personal preference and you just paint it on with a paintbrush. Now only use paintbrushes that you've only ever used with icing. Don't use a paintbrush you've ever used with real paint. But people ask all the time, like, are you using special paintbrushes? Nope, I'm just using paintbrushes. That glitter there, there are a few different products in this set that I no longer use. So I will link similar products that I do use today. That glitter is one of the products I no longer use, but I will link one that I would actually use today in the description of this video. This here, I am outlining the, the skull with a piping consistency. It doesn't really matter if it is stiff, excuse me, if it is medium or soft, I would not use a stiff peak if it's medium or soft. This to me looks like a medium peak. If free handing like this is not your jam, since I have painted the base layer with black, it's kind of hard. I mean, maybe using a black edible marker to trace it out would work. It's possible you won't be able to see the edible marker, in which case you could always use a scribe to sketch it out first, actually like etch into the icing, because that base layer, you do want to allow that to dry. Um, a lot of people have issues with bleeding. I will admit I don't have a lot of issues with color bleed, but this would be a scenario definitely where color bleed would be an issue. And that's because you're starting with black on the base and then you're flooding um, with white on top. A couple of ways to prevent color bleed First of all, don't oversaturate your colors like the black here. I'm a big fan of the Sugar Art Master Elite in black, highly pigmented powder. You don't have to use as much. Allow your colors to develop over time. Um, so don't oversaturate the color. Allow that black to fully dry. And then with the white, a lot of people add white food coloring to their white base, whether it be gel food coloring, like in Americolor brand, um, there are other brands as well, or the Sugar Art has a great white as well in their Master Elite collection. I didn't always do that. I definitely did not do that with this icing. But again, I don't really have issues with color bleed. It may have something to do with my base recipe, given that there's so much lemon juice in it. I'm not really sure. Um, for this one, I don't think that I really allowed my outline to completely dry. The reason for that is that I wanted there to be a more seamless look where I flooded. Since you can see the cutouts here, um, I wanted there to be a more seamless look between the outline and the flood. And the best way to do that is to not wait for the outline to dry. Because then, since they're both wet, like the outline is still wet and the flood is wet, they'll kind of marry together better. So just something to keep in mind. And this is another product that I no longer use, but I will link a recommendation in the description. This here is a technique I'm doing because I don't have an airbrush. Now this, if you had an airbrush, this kind of shading is definitely something you can do with an airbrush. I personally don't own one. I've have used an airbrush maybe twice. I just don't think it's, for me personally, in the way that I work with cookies, it's not worth the purchase because you're not only buying an airbrush, you also have to buy all of the airbrush colors because you're not just using, um, you're not just using like gel food coloring. You have to use specific airbrush colors. There's a lot of cleaning and maintenance involved in the airbrush and 
yeah, I would just rather do something like this, which is called dry brushing. Um, and I, I don't know, I think you can also have a lot, well, as someone who doesn't have a lot of experience with an airbrush, <laughs> I think you can have more control when you're doing something like this with a brush. I'm just using a pretty like plush brush. If you use something too stiff, a brush that's too stiff when doing um, dry shading like this, it will be a bit too stark, if that makes sense. And this is a skull, and like, so no, my eyes are not perfectly symmetrical, but it's a skull. I don't know. Are actual skull eye holes perfectly symmetrical? Maybe they are. Uh, anywho, this next cookie is hands down one of my favorites, if not maybe my favorite design of this entire set. It's just, uh, <laughs> I think probably the reason why it's my favorite is because this tombstone is a bit more of a blank slate. You gotta have a little more imagination to do it up, right? So I wanted it to be like this creepy, spooky-ish tombstone with some dimension. So the way that I first accomplished some dimension you'll see in a momento is that I did a little bit of wet on wet with the, just give it a second, here I am using my scribe. This is one of my original older scribes. I no longer use this one. This is the Sweet Sugar Bell one. It's a great basic scribe. I just found that the, um, the handle would discolor really easily. It's made out of white plastic of some sort. All right, so here I'm going with my Dimension. And I actually think this might be piping consistency. No, this can't be piping consistency. That must be a flood. Okay, um, but I'm using my scribe here to just do some messy pulls just to give the grass a little more like pointy look like grass might have. Kind of mix it together a little bit more at the bottom so that's my base for the grass and then i'm doing the dry brushing here again just to add that dimension and again if you have an airbrush you could totally use an airbrush for this i'm just mesmerized to myself okay <laughs> What else can I talk about? Just a random side note. Um, if you've followed me for a long time, you know that I used to exclusively decorate on paper towels, and now I don't. I decorated on paper towels largely because back in the day I only filmed in square frame, and that was perfect for Instagram. Now when you fold, I always buy the paper towels that um, are half sheets and I would fold them in half and that's a perfect square. So that always gave me the perfect frame. But as you can see now, I now need landscape and portrait. So anywho, uh, I just used piping consistency to add a second layer on that grass. And I just love how that looks. Like it was really easy, really simple, but it just looks so much cooler. Okay, just impressed with myself, clearly. All right, this is piping consistency. This looks like a soft-ish peak, maybe somewhere, somewhere between a soft and a medium. At this point in my cookie decorating life, I was not as aware of the differences in different piping consistencies and different flood consistencies, I kind of just rolled with whatever I made that day. And as you can see, I did a two consistency outline in flood. So that was definitely though a piping consistency that I did that skull with. And this looks like this looks like almost a flood, which I definitely should not have been piping letters with a flood, but maybe that's all I had. It's my guess here. My favorite part, okay, the grass is probably my first favorite. My second favorite part is this little uh, spider. Spider, that's what this is called. <laughs> um, the little spider that I drew on. Okay. 
I'm just gonna say these markers that I'm using here is this I think this is a brand of marker that I no longer use so I have found that with my recipe with the lemon juice uh, some black edible black markers will uh, they'll turn kind of green after a couple days like they they go on black like this but then I think the acid in there we go there's the tombstone the acid in my lemon juice icing turns the black writing green which is just super annoying but I have found uh, a couple of different edible marker brands that don't turn green which is awesome so that makes Grace very happy <laughs> and I will uh, I'll be sure to link my favorite one in the description here next up I'm going to show you three different ghosts that I made so it's all the same base flood so I'm only gonna flood this once uh, back when I made these this ghost cutter all the rage by Bobby's cutters and the three designs I did here were not at all terribly um, uh, what's the word original <laughs> at all these were designs that just about everyone was doing like this cutter everyone loved this cutter everyone loved these kinds of designs that went with it so I cannot claim originality and you know that goes for a lot of cookie cutters I think one of the biggest misconceptions that people who know nothing about the cookie world say think is that cookies are all what's the word um there's a lack of understanding that cookie cutters are sold in the cookie cutter cookie world and the person who made the cookie cutter designed the cookie shape design um and a lot of times it's already comes with a design because that's the design of the cookie cutter like it's a very specific shape and by buying that cookie cutter you're buying the right to make that design and it's not like because I happen to be the first person you saw making this um, particular design or particular shape that I somehow came up with it chances are I didn't like the person who designed this cutter came up with the design of the shape itself so anywho but by buying <laughs> the cookie cutter you know you're buying the inte intellectual rights to use that design and same thing goes I've talked about with hand lettering before like hand lettering that comes with a cookie cutter so Anywho, I, I digress. Um, what I'm doing here is that is a soft peak piping consistency. And I'm doing that to make sure that it does not crater. Because this is really small little spaces. You need to al allow that to dry pretty well. Because what I'm about to do is add some sprinkles. Um, if you're adding sprinkles next to an area that is supposed to have dried first, like you don't want to add sprinkles to the entire pumpkin, if it's not dry enough, especially if you're using like sanding sugar, the sanding sugar will actually stick to the icing if it's just like just barely crusted. And since I'm actually placing <laughs> these sprinkles and I can still see kind of a sheen um, especially the left side of that pumpkin my hunch is that maybe I didn't quite let it dry enough so I couldn't just pour sprinkles onto it which is what I would normally do these days I actually have a set of tweezers actually I have a few different tweezers that I use to place sprinkles and that's probably what I would do instead of using my fingertips because not my, my fat little fingertips um, yeah, it's a lot easier to use some tweezers and I'll actually link those in the description of the video. I just love the cute little faces on these ghosts. They're just so happy. Now, if you don't want to pipe the face, you could certainly do this with an edible black marker. As you, so I'm going to do the eyebrows just with the edible black marker. No, the cute ghost. And I have two more ghosts to show you. So like I said, so I just flooded them all the same. And now 
I'm going to show you how I finished off these other two. Cute little flags never get old. Now, what I'm going to do here is I believe I'm actually flooding these. Am I? Let's see. Is this a flood? Yeah, that looks like a flood to me. So today I would actually use a soft peak piping consistency to pressure pipe flood those areas. And I would do that because there'd be less likely for it to crater. Now, if I recall though, I don't think these even crater, which is pretty magnificent. If I used a flood consistency in these areas and I don't three years ago I did not have a dehydrator three years ago I don't think so you can see like the tiniest crater on the green one but overall these are pretty poofy I am impressed with myself good job 2018 grace proud of you <laughs> today so today the way that I combat craters I use the thickest icing consistency possible so whether that be like a thicker flood or if I can use a soft peak piping consistency I'll do that and then I pop them in the dehydrator immediately after flooding or pressure piping the section that I'm afraid is going to crater doing these adorable little eyes that looks like a soft peak piping to me and this is actually piping on piping. So if you get them wet <laughs> and you do it quickly, you can make them kind of flush into each other. And am I gonna use a scribe? Let's see if I, I didn't use a scribe, but you could use a scribe to just gently jiggle the surface of those eyes if they didn't quite settle in. So there's my second boo ghost. And we've got one more ghost to show you. What you can't really see at this angle is that I am actually pulling the icing off the surface of the cookie. And that's really crucial when piping lines, whether they be straight or curved, that is what is going to get you the most beautiful line. So back to my paper towel conversation. I no longer use paper towels largely because once for two reasons once i started filming in a larger frame so that i could get landscape for youtube and portrait for reels and tiktok the <laughs> the squared out paper towel just looked kind of funny and then to have to use even just like a bigger piece of paper towel just looks silly to me and I, cause I wanted the, I wanted the whole frame to just be continuous and the same color or texture or whatever it is. Um, and then there was a part of me that was just like, maybe it doesn't look as professional with a paper towel, but I have to say when I was making that transition, there were a lot of loyal people who were sad. <laughs> that I stopped using a paper towel because it felt very like comforting and homey to them. And I do, I do miss my paper towel sometimes, but I think, I think I'm doing okay now. Um, that pink that I used is another pink that I no longer use, but I will link a good pink powder in the description. And then again, that's just a dry brushing that I did for something like that. You'll need to use a bit of a stiffer brush to get such a saturation of the color in those two spots it's just so cute and you need to make sure that your base is dry when you do uh dry brushing like that because you're gonna be putting a decent amount of pressure on that surface <laughs> to get that saturation of color oh what a cute little ghosty ghost And there is our third and final ghost. Let's see, up next is another one of my favorites. And actually, it's 
it's often a lot of people's favorites and I've been trying to figure out why. It might be just that it's super simple, but it's also like easy to do at the same time. I don't know, who knows. This is a flask. Is this called a flask? <laughs> I'm having a moment of doubt here. Uh, this is a science beaker? Beaker, maybe that's the word. Someone please correct me in the comments. Okay, and I honestly, I'm not really sure where I got this cutter from. I'll try to link as many cutters as I can in the description, but I know that a lot of these were random metal cutters that I had. So we'll see if I can link a lot of them. But what I'm doing here is, I guess, like a wet on wet technique because I'm flooding two sections next to each other wet next to wet because I wanted there to be a seamless connection between the white and the purple and doing some wet on wet bubbles here with this green and you can tell my flood was pretty thick because that green isn't like falling in immediately let's see if I do what I know. Okay, what does drive me crazy about these dots is they were like a little too um, placed, if that makes sense. Like they don't really look like genuine bubbles, but that's okay. Um, that purple, just side note, I want to say. So the purple is a very like grayed out purple. And the way that I do that is I just add some black to it. Now, I'm not a true color mixing artist. And I do believe my art teacher friend would tell me, Grace, why are you adding black? I think what you're supposed to do is add blue. And that's what gets you the grayed out. I'm not really, no, is it? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know, whatever. What works for me is black. I just add a tiny bit of black. I usually add some already mixed black icing because even just using the tiniest drop of black is going to be too much drop black if you're going to use black straight from like the bottle of gel food coloring that's what I would do I would take a toothpick and stick that toothpick in and just add the tiniest bit okay there is our glass beaker flask thing I think it's a beaker gosh it's been a really long time since so I've been in science class uh, this friendly monster is definitely not an original design I'll link the person that I originally saw it from in the description this is an absolute favorite of a lot of people. And I think it's because it's just so simple. Like I am actually using a square cookie cutter here, but if you don't have a square cookie cutter, you can just cut out a square with a knife and your cookie dough. Super simple there. Flooding it with green. You can do a one consistency. You can do a two cons consistency outline and flood. Whatever you are most comfortable with. You can see though that it kind of, you see that shadow on the left side, that is a crater on a larger surface. It's just less noticeable because it's a larger surface. But that just goes to show you that all royal icing craters. This here I did a two consistency outline in flood. And again, you know, if I did this today, I would definitely do a one consistency because y'all like I ain't got time to be outlining and flooding a detail on top. Some people who do this kind of detail don't like to do two layers of icing. They will actually like um, do the, the, the hair first, outline and flood that, I'll let that dry, and then do the green next, if that makes sense. So it's just one layer of icing instead of two. I'm I'm okay with the two layer and I think the reason that some people shy away from two layers is because they just think it's like too much icing to eat which is fair which is totally fair I tend to prescribe to the more the merrier in the icing department so there we go it's my little monster Frankenstein this is another one of my favorites this is a classic or at least I want to say like an OG, like an original spiderweb cutter. Uh, at least I feel like it was an original. Let's see if I can figure out where it was from. 
but this spider design that I'm about to do, you don't even have to have a spider color cutter. You can do it on just like any shape. I've done spider webs on circles. Uh, you can see here that I under flooded and that was very intentional. So when I under flood, this is one way to do it. Just I intentionally leave gaps in between the icing and that just allows me to know for sure that I'm under flooding it. And the reason I under flood is because I'm going to add a decent amount of icing in the wet on wet design and I didn't want to over flood. When I first started and certainly around this time, one of my biggest issues was over flooding. <laughs> um, it was just really hard for me to gauge how much icing, how much flood icing to add to the surface, even when I was outlining. And so when I first started, I would always make a couple extra of each design because I was anticipating that probably one of them would over flood. And often, sometimes you can catch an over flood before it's too late and you can fix it and no one will know but not always. Um, sometimes you don't know until the cookie has like, until the icing has dried too much and then it's like, well, you can't do anything about it because you've already got icing over the edge of the cookie and blah, blah, blah. So I'm doing wet on wet here. That was a messy, what I would call messy wet on wet just because I didn't clean off the scribe after every pull, which I think is fine because this is a spider web and you don't need to have a clean pull every time. And here I am going again with my dry brushing. Clearly one of my favorite techniques from this set. This was also, I think, you know, 2018, three years ago was when people used airbrushes a lot. I think even, I want to say like almost even more so than they do now. I feel like right now in the cookie world, airbrushing is a bit more stylized and more intentional whereas airbrushing was just like everywhere everyone was doing it except for me because i still don't have an airbrush and then i add a little spider de do what a cute little spider do that definitely there is piping consistency like a soft peak because I wanted to make sure that um, <sighs> that it didn't crater. I know, the legs on the spider look a little funny. I don't think, whatever. And I, oh yeah. <laughs> I did 10 legs on the spider. I'm sorry. Spiders are supposed to have eight legs, right? This, this is one of the moments where I go, it's a cookie, people. So my spider has ten legs. <sighs> YOLO. I don't know. <laughs> oh, how cute. So cute. So cute. Okay, another... Gosh, I know. This is what I, this is what I do. When I figure out what order I want to do the cookies in, I often like stack it with all of my favorite ones first. So this is another favorite one. Surprise, surprise. And I'm doing that same technique again where I'm just painting on the base. I can tell by the way that I have added way, like I've way oversaturated my black. That was one of my biggest biggest struggles when I first started was I was continuously oversaturating my black and I think when I get to the cauldron I will explain how not to do that because that's an important thing to learn and there are also some adverse effects of oversaturating your icing which I think I experience a bit later we'll see all right again that's glitter that I don't use anymore but I will link some other options. You can definitely see that that icing has dried because it's very matte now. I'm doing more cutouts and I firmly believe that you need to use 
a two consistency outline and flood for cutouts, or at least you do need to be outlining the cutouts with a piping consistency first because cutouts are very hard to achieve and maintain if you're not doing an outline like this because the flood just wants to flood into itself. I've done cutouts a handful of times, like small cutouts, without outlining first, and I have regretted it every single time. So learn from my mistakes, friends. Use that piping consistency for your cutouts. This was a moment that I, like, almost regret doing. Maybe not, because it adds a lot of dimension. But instead of making this just one flat pumpkin surface, I decided to add sections to my pumpkin. Whoops, my line broke there. Line breaks very easily, um, usually due to inconsistent pressure on your bag as you're piping. So just keep that in mind. I could have done a better job on these lines. <laughs> making these sections look a little more realistic and rounded, but oh well. Okay, so I will say one of the other things that I struggled with a lot when I was first beginning around this time was flooding in sections like this. I really struggled with the seam in between them. And something that I certainly do differently now is I make sure that the sections are flooded much better just with the tip of the bag than having to use a scribe like this. Although, okay, the first section that you flood, whatever, use a scribe to your heart's content. It's the remaining section, so the other two that I'm going to do after these crust, that it's much more important to make sure um, that you're focusing on that seam. And we'll see here if I get any craters, especially in that center section, because I feel like it's going to crater. Those are small areas. I'm using a pretty thin flood. I know it's a thin flood because it's settling on its own. We'll see. We'll see. So let that crust. I can tell that I have barely let it crust because you still see that shine, a bit of shine there, but it's like enough crust. Okay, so this is what drives me crazy. When you're flooding in sections, when you flood that remaining sections, my, me personally, I think you have to make sure that you flood up to the seam. In the entire section so you can see here I left a bunch of areas not flooded and I have to use my scribe to get into those crevices and I just find that when you have to mess with a seam with a scribe it just does not look good it's not like an even beautiful crisp seam so note to self I mean okay fine it's good enough but <laughs> I just think that I have learned better techniques since then So I try to use the flood and the actual tip of the bag to get to all those edges without a scribe. My personal preference, I'm sure there are people who can flood and scribe away beautifully. Just not me. It's not the way I roll. And that's okay. Okie dokie. Now all of that has dried pretty well. I can see a little bit of cratering at the bottom, that bottom middle section. Nothing too crazy. Uh, the stem, I know, the stem is not actually green. That's fine. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think I used brown at all. So like, why, why make a brown if you don't need brown? Maybe some stems are green. <laughs> I feel like I should have done some better research. 
<laughs> That's okay. All right. Yet again, we are doing the shading that I clearly love so much. And I'm okay with how much I love this shading. I really am. Feeling good about it. Okay. What else can we talk about? Yeah, I don't know. I'm at a loss. This is a pretty big cookie, by the way. I mean, this has got to be like a four and a half inch pumpkin. That's a big cookie. These days, my sweet spot is like three and a half to 3.75. Um, this is the kind of cookie that I would do if I was like, actually, I don't know what I would do this for you anyway. Anywho, you can see, see in those eyes in particular, because I let the outline dry before I flooded it, you can really see the separation between the outline and the flood. That's not, that's not terrible. That's not the end of the world. And I probably could have used a scribe to like help that marry a little bit better, but that's one reason why I like to do it. Sometimes I will flood immediately and not wait for that outline to dry. But what a cute, spooky pumpkin. I feel like that's the theme of this set, cute and spooky. Because, I mean, I tried to do spooky, but I feel like my, <laughs> I'm not that good at, at spooky. And I'm okay with that. I, my, my technique tends to be more like cute cartoon. I'm fine with that. Totally fine with that. Anywho. So this one, this is actually a pretty small cookie. This is probably like two and a half inches, I want to say. This cute little apple. I was going for like a poisoned apple look, as you'll see in a minuto. So I'm using a purple drip because why not? Um, that's one thing that I teach with when you're designing sets is play with the colors. Like I, I always come up with my color palette first and I try to limit my color palette to like five to six colors per set. doesn't always work depending on the set needs or whatever, but I find that five to six is like my happy place more than that. It just takes way too much time to mix colors. Less than that, there's like not always quite enough color variety unless I'm using a lot of other like dusts and glitter and that kind of stuff. And then I will kind of make my designs work from there. So in this case, like I'm sure that the drip would probably more normally be what red for a poisonous apple, but I didn't make red for this set, so I used purple. And then as you'll see in a minute, the color of the stem and the leaf uh, is black because I didn't make brown and black just seemed appropriately spooky. The sprinkles I'm using here are just Wilton sprinkles. Uh, I don't have really any spring fancy sprinkle mixes and I certainly didn't then. I would just buy Wilton from like Michaels. Uh, side note though, do not buy those black pearls. <laughs> First of all, they bleed, but second of all, they are hard as a rock. They're not pleasant to eat. Um, yeah. Don't buy them. And this is probably like a kind of a thinned soft peak that I was just piping there. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> but there's my poisonous apple, my cute poisonous apple. And next up we have this cute little bat. Now, the way that I set this up, it looks like I'm flooding in sections, right? Right. But the way I finish this kills me softly and slowly because you'll see the way I finish it. It's like there was no point in flooding in sections in the first place. <laughs> Excuse me. And that I see people do this often, not often, but enough to note like flooding in sections. And then you'll see what I do after I flood the sections where it was like, what was the point in flooding in sections? And again, Here's this edible glitter that I don't currently use. I will link down another one in the description. So here I am doing the flooding in sections. 
And I actually did a good job flooding in sections, so I'm not really sure why I ruined that in a minute. <laughs> I'll show you exactly what I mean in a minute when I get there. Really cute little bat. Batio. I can see here that my lighting is kind of wonky. Um, don't know what that's all about. And you might have seen that the camera went in and out of focus. Um, I have since learned to force the, I don't know what the right word is. I use my iPhone to film everything. I force it to focus. There's, there's a real word for that. Um, on the cookie so that the camera can't change focus. So that kind of thing doesn't happen again. And that happens because your hand comes too close into the into the frame and so the camera wants to focus on your hand instead of the cookie anyway those were some some decent sections but then so this is why i was like grace why 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 i'm going to i'm, pr I'm proceeding at this very moment to outline the entire bat if you're going to do this my friends don't waste your time flooding in sections don't do it uh, I could have saved my I could have saved myself time and not bothered flooding in sections <laughs> yeah um, but you live you learn I think I did this because I was not I was not proud of my seams which is silly come on grace but anywho the bat still ends up being super cute so it's okay I know I was going for a lot of black here I'm still gonna explain how not to oversaturate your black we'll do that at the cauldron because I think I'm almost done with this adorable little bat oh right the bat needs fangs definitely the best part of this bat the cute little fangs and where I knock my camera oopsie doodle so I used to use just a really cheap um, phone mount that clamped onto the side of my table I mean it, it for the most part got the job done obviously it was really easy to knock it and for it to kind of jiggle whoops <laughs> I now use mounts that like weighted bases that actually sit on the table oh look at the bat cute okay here we're going classic with our candy corn the one thing that I did here, which I was like, I felt like I didn't have my brain totally screwed on straight, is <laughs> uh, instead of flooding the white and the yellow at the same time, or like one immediately after the other, I'm you're about to see me flood the white, then the orange, then the yellow. And the reason why I'm like, screw your head on straight, um is because it does I think take more time um, like I didn't need to do it like this because you can flood the white and the yellow first let those crust and then flood the orange that is just that's just the way to do it my friends yeah <laughs> oh and you can see how I ruined the seam right there in that upper left okay not ruined but the upper left corner, I, oh, now you can tell that I'm actually using a different cookie to, to film this last section. Whoops. Um, but that upper left, I had messed with the seam too closely with that scribe, which is why I got that wonky, not nice seam. Again, I would have, today I would have flooded the entire seam, not used a scribe to finish it off like this. But... You know I'm team good enough, and I would call that good enough, my friends. Next design, we have a mummy, which is another one. This is not an original design, but another one just like the Frankenstein monster. Wow, today's been a struggle. Okay, uh, <laughs> this mummy, both of these are really popular, I think amongst beginners and just people who want to have fun and decorate some cookies for Halloween. 
and I think that's for two reasons. Number one, it's on a very basic shape. So you could do this on anything. You could do it on a circle. You can do it on a square. You can do it on whatever you have. It's still going to look like a mummy, I promise. And it's just really basic. Um, so you flood the base with white. And then I'm going in here. This is piping consistency green. going to fill in my cute little eyes with some black. This is also piping consistency. And then some white. Finish off those eyes. And then this is the best part. This is the most fun. You do not need to be precise here. You're just piping a whole bunch of lines, overlapping them, doing them at, di di bleh, doing them at different angles. Piping lines. Let's talk about piping lines for a second. So piping lines is hard. Not gonna lie, piping lines is hard. What can you do to try to get a nice straight line? First of all, make sure that you are bracing your arm on the table, either your elbow on the table or maybe just above your el just above your elbow on the edge of the table whatever is most comfortable it just for me i guess it depends on how far i have to reach to flood or to to, to pipe make sure that you have a good like full 180 degree radius um being able to move your arm wherever it is placed wherever you're um bracing it uh, second thing is you always need to lift the icing off the surface of the cookie. That's a hard thing to tell at this angle. You can't see I'm after actually lifting the icing up anywhere from a quarter of an inch to an inch, depending on how far you have to flood or excuse me, pipe. And second thing, make sure that you are guiding your icing. So it's like reading music. Your, your eyes are always going to be ahead of the line. So there you go, simple. You could even add more lines than this. Like I was going really basic. Okay, this is the moment I promised I would talk about my black icing because here is a big black cookie. <laughs> All right, and yes, it is gonna dye the inside of your mouth black. Um, if you don't want to use so much black icing, something you could do first of all you don't have to make it black you could make it gray I've definitely made a gray cauldron before uh, you could flood it white or gray or whatever and you could paint it black with some edible paint that's still gonna probably dye your mouth black but here we are so how do you not oversaturate your black um, first of all do not use gel food coloring this I use gel food coloring and it is way, 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 way too easy to use way too much gel food coloring. Um, these days I exclusively use the Sugar Art Master Elite in black. It's a highly pigmented powder. You don't need as much. Um, I do still have black gel food coloring though when I just need the tiniest bit of black to add to a color so I don't have to use the powder. Anywho, uh, you want to allow it to develop. <laughs> I always make my black icing at least the night before I color it to a very dark gray and then I let it sit overnight you know for whatever eight ten hours in a sealed container on the on the counter and then I in the morning it's often black enough if it's not black enough by the morning then I'll add some more coloring when you allow colors colored icing to sit the color will get darker the longer it sits for I can tell that I've oversaturated this black because it is dried and it's like this matte, it looks very dry. Like it doesn't look shiny at all. It just looks dry and probably a little crumbly. Uh, and that is, yeah, why well, I've definitely oversaturated it. Uh, I also got some craters in the feet. I used flood consistency for that. Today I would definitely use a soft peak piping consistency for the feet. This is still such a cute cookie though and it's actually pretty easy to execute because you're just going to flood the cauldron and then I recommend using some sort of piping consistency, either soft or medium peak, um, to do the stuff coming out of the cauldron. And here I am using just very basic uh, sprinkles. These, I'm pretty sure these are Wilton sprinkles. 
you'll see what I'm doing here first is actually placing the sprinkles. Um, I like to do that with the bigger ones just to make sure I'm getting enough big ones in there. And then I'll fill it in with the smaller ones. Side note, those purple circles again, same deal as those um, black circles that I, or what are those? Those are balls. <laughs> those are called balls. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Uh, don't use those. These are Wilton brand again, and they are so freaking, sorry. They are so hard. Um, not good. So the rest of these great sprinkles, lots of sugar. Yum, yum, yum. And you do need to work pretty quickly when you're working with a piping consistency, especially if you're working with medium, because that is going to crust faster and it's going to make it harder for the sprinkles to adhere. If they've kind of already just started to crust, you may need to actually press down on the sprinkles to make sure that they will stick. Um, it, you can add too many sprinkles, by the way, because if you add too many sprinkles, the weight of the sprinkles presses down the, um, the icing, and you could potentially have some overflow of your sprinkle section. Whoopsie doodle. Okie dokie. Speaking of sprinkles, uh, this will be another cookie with sprinkles. And I'm doing yet another one. I don't know what you call this, this cutout technique that's really popular. Lots of people do it. Uh, this is one of my favorite cookie cutters. It, it was, or the favorite shapes. Um, I, again, I cannot take original concept <laughs> um, credit for this idea because I'm taking what is normally, I guess, considered a candy corn cookie cutter and I'm actually doing this candy bucket in this shape. There's so much you can do with this shape. Um, I think it originated from Sweet Sugar Bell and she does a lot of, um, I'm blanking on what the word is right now, but uh, using the same cutter for lots of different designs, which is a really awesome approach. <laughs> I clearly didn't need quite that much. Um, I also clearly did not film myself flooding in <laughs> the uh, this cutie patootie. Um, Oh well but same deal as my other um, the other pumpkin that I did flood consistency I didn't bother with sections on this one because it was just so small and would have been hard to do and then the handle was piped with a piping consistency I might have even next time used a thicker like a bigger cut on the tip for a thicker handle and then this is piping consistency orange looks like a soft peak to me and I'm just putting my sprinkle mix on there. What I normally do these days is I actually do this over a bowl. So I have a bowl of these sprinkles and I will use a spoon to pour the sprinkles on top of the icing. Just find that to be a more efficient way to approach this. And I just poured off the excess sprinkles and now I'm using, um, this handy dandy tool here which I will also link I think it has a funny little name um, it's by Sweet Sugar Bell super easy or super helpful it has a scribe on the other end but I like to use that other end mostly the flat end and then I do believe we have reached the last cookie in this set how is that possible it's been it's been a it's been a time my friends all right this is the coffin and what can we say about this coffin here it's a great question grace i'm really digging my muted purple in this set i will say though i think that i could have done a better job marrying all the colors and what i mean by that is so a technique that i do now that i don't I didn't always do when I'm mixing my colors I always mix just a little bit of each color into each other so anywhere from like a pea size to a quarter size depending on how much icing I'm making if it's like a cup it's gonna be like a pea size and what this does I really need to figure out the correct terminology here um, but it gives it the same kind of hue or same undertones 
so that the colors just kind of work better together. The reason why I think I did, I don't think I did a great job with this in this set is that this is a very muted purple, but the orange in this set is pretty bright. And I think if I had actually done that trick to kind of mix the colors together, that the orange would have been less bright. So, but it still works. It's a Halloween set. I just, I take a lot of pride in my color palettes in coming up with colors that look good together. But then this, what I just mentioned is that extra step, which really takes it to the next level in terms of all of your colors looking really good together. Even when I'm doing a rainbow, I still do that rainbow of colors. Uh, you see me, I just broke a line there, which is like devastating. And your, your instinct may be to actually pull that line off, but it will just be a bigger mess. Um, if you try to take the line off and redo it, especially with black. So Um, yeah, <laughs> you, you can get really good at fixing. I didn't do the best job at fixing that line. Like it's good enough. I think the, the bottom part of it didn't do the best job, but you just got to roll with it. Um, and I like to leave, you know, it, it's real life. If I break a line, like I don't, I don't perfectly pipe every single line. So I think it's good to keep a real, keep a real people. I'm doing the shading again. Love this shading. Big fan. I just felt like it looked a little too plain, especially with how muted that purple is. It's, it's funny to think about like where I was when I decorated older sets like this, kind of what my mindset was where I was in my cookie, cookie career. And then to kind of think where I'm at now and what I've, what I've learned, things that I do differently, things that I still do the same. I rarely ever do a design more than once. Since I am a content creator, I like to always be doing new things, but it's fun to think about like, if I redid this, how would I do it differently? What would, what, how would I do this design differently or would I do it the same? Because it's just that perfect. Who knows? Okay, there's our coffin. And this is our entire set. Everything together. I'm just, oh, <laughs> I love this set. I hope you love this set too. I hope you learned a thing or two. Maybe you'll recreate some of these designs. I do this because I want you to recreate the designs. I want you to have fun. And yeah, <laughs> thanks so much and have a sweet one.